too expensive, had to leave LA. So I got into my car and I went away to the big estate, playing poker every day. Going all in with these fish like I'm at an all you can eat buffet. We're still in El Paso. The action was too good for us to leave. We take the morning off and check out UTEP. It's funny because they call themselves the Miners and their stadium is literally carved right into the side of a mountain. We then check out the campus in search of some honeys. No luck there though, but our consolation prize is another delicious meal with Julio at a place called Ellen J's Cafe. Their tortilla soup here was no lie, the best soup I've had in my life. What's up guys, we're back in El Paso at House of Kings. Great action here last night, we won 760 bucks. Decided to run it back again, we're in for 500 at the 1-2. We might have a 2-5 game coming midway through this session, so stay in food for that. Drop a like on this video and let's just get right into the hand. We sit down at the 1-2 two table in for five hundred dollars there's only a few hands to go over here before our name gets called for the two five two k cap game first in a note we look down at king queen of hearts from the middle position there's a ten dollar button straddle on and the small blind the pig blind and two others put in the ten bucks not gonna be playing for ten dollars here with a nice hand like king queen suited i raise it up to sixty dollars just the big blind and the under the gun player put in the additional $50. So going three ways to the flop, which gives us top pair, comes queen, jack, three with two diamonds. Interesting move by the big blind when he leads out for $75 and the under the gun player finds a call. So the action's back onto us. Do you guys go for the raise here or just the flat call? There's a lot of draws out there like the straight and flush draw. So I definitely would approve of a raise in this situation. However, I just stick in the $75, hoping to get a clean turn and proceed accordingly. Turn is not that it comes a six of diamonds so the obvious front door flush draw now gets there the big blind slows down and checks and the under the gun snap goes all in for 130 dollars if the big blind was to continue betting here for a large sizing i'd probably be able to get away from it especially if under the gun calls but when the under the gun just shoves all in for a little bet here of 130 dollars I find a call not thinking the big blind is too strong. Great news for us when the big blind folds. No more action to go into the pot. The river comes the four of clubs, a pretty safe card. The opponent turns over ace king with the king of diamonds. Not really sure what he was doing there. Probably trying to represent the flush and get us both the fold, but he didn't have a lot left in his stack. I call him and we're going to take down that $700 pot with our pair of queens. Second hand here, we look down at pocket kings. The button straddle is on to $7. I raise it up to 22. There's four callers, so going five ways to the flop here with a premium. Flop's pretty good for us. It comes nine, four, three with two spades. With $110 in the pot and going very multi-way here, I decided to bet $65. Cutoff's the only player that puts in the calls going heads up to the turn, which pairs the four. It comes a four of clubs. No reason to slow down and not bet here. The front door flush draw doesn't get there. No other cards improve a straight draw. For that reason, I decided to bet $155 and the cutoff pretty much snap calls me. River comes the ace of clubs. Obviously, it's a card over our pocket king, so I could be scared about it. However, what aces does he really have here? The only one I can think of is maybe ace nine or maybe some combination with the ace of spades in it. I don't think a bet really accomplishes too much here. If I check, I can pick up some bluffs. I'm really not going to be folding in this situation too often. I start with the check and the cutoff now takes two hands and snap bets $200 into the middle. There's $550 in the pot and with his 200 and my 200 if I call, I only need to put in 200 to win around $1,000. That's about five to one. I think about it for a little while, but ultimately decide that a call is the best option here. Unfortunately though, he gives us the bad news and shows 9-4 for the turn boat. Strange hand here. I guess we were multi-way, so he was incentivized to call, but I'm thinking 9-4 of diamonds is a little bit loose. No worries though. If we play pocket kings versus 9-4 a bunch of times, we're going to get most of the money. He then explains some of his logic for playing 9-4 of diamonds here at House of Kings in El Paso. So they have a progressive ultimate flush and the diamond one this day was almost worth $1,800. Progressive flush means you have to have five of diamonds on the board and two in your hand. Very hard to do, but players here will chase and try to make that hand to get the $1,800 bonus. Next hand note, we look down at king queen offsuit from the hijack. Few limps to me and I raise it up to $15. No shortage of action. We get four callers. So we're going five ways to the flop, which is pretty great for our hand. It comes queen, deuce, deuce. Lucky for us, Israeli Ron is not playing at this table. Otherwise, we'd probably have to slow down here and check. People here in El Paso like to donk lead out into the preflop aggressor. No different here when the small blind leads out for $60. I put in the call 
call and I'm the only one to do so. So we're going heads up to the turn, which comes the nine of diamonds. My call on the flop didn't slow down the small blind. He fires out for half pot, $100 here into the $195 pot. Obviously we're not folding top pair with a king kicker here. I stick in the $100 and we're off to the river. River doesn't change really anything. It comes to five of clubs, actions on the small blind. He thinks about his decision for a second before deciding on a bet of $200. Another half pot sizing here and this is a very strong bet, betting all three streets. I guess he could have a deuce, but if he has one, he has to prove it to us. I didn't come to El Paso to fold king queen. I stick in the $200 and the opponent turns over queen 10. Interesting, he went for the third bet on the river there and donked into us on the flop. No sweat for us though. We turn over our king queen and we're gonna take down that $800 pot with one pair. Last hand from this 1-2 session, we look down at pocket kings with 900 in our stack. I'm under the gun, so I raise it up to $15. We only get one caller from the middle position, and we're off to the flop. Flop comes king, jack, seven, bang, we flop a set. Having this board absolutely crushed, I start with a check, hoping the aggressive opponent will fire out into us. He doesn't do that. He checks behind, and we see the ace of hearts on the turn. The ace of hearts will connect well with my raising range. It'll also connect well with his calling range. So for that reason, I decide to get tricky and go for the check raise here. I check it over to the opponent, and sure enough, he decides he wants to bet he fires out for $30. Our plan worked out pretty well. I'm hoping he has a hand that has an ace in it. Maybe even better for us, a hand like ace jack or ace seven. For that reason, I check raise him to $90. No more action coming our way though. The opponent finds a fold. So we show our flop set to the table and rack up our chips and head over to the two five table. All right, you guys, we're into the 2-5 game here for 1935. It's a 500 to 2K max with some friends that came out to play with us here. Got out of that 1-2 for a profit of like 430 bucks, I think. So not bad, gonna try to run it here, up here for a couple hours and then hit the bars. Let's go. And run it up, we did. Into this 2-5 for 1935, we took the 935 from the other table and added on 1,000 cash. First hand of note, we looked down at Queen Jack of Hearts. $25 straddle is on and the action folds to me. I raise it up to $65 and the small blind and the straddle both call. So going three ways to the flop. Flop comes ace, jack, nine with two clubs. The small blind and the straddle both check it over to me. I think this is a pretty good board to go for a C bet. So that's what I do. I stick in $50 and sure enough, both players fold. Nice to win the first hand of the table and set the tone. We then look down at King Jack offsuit from late position, under the gun straddles to $15 and I raise it up to $40. When the action folds pack around to him, he shoves his entire stack all in. No worries though, it's only $140 so I make the snap call. We turn over our cards, he shows pocket sixes, it's a good old fashioned race and here's the run up. Flop comes queen, nine, four with two spades. Turn comes the queen of clubs, we're gonna need a king or a jack on the river. And that's exactly what the doctor ordered, we get the king of clubs on the river, we're gonna take down that $280 pot. With 2300 in our stack, we look down at pocket tens from the small blind. $15 button straddle is on, so I'm gonna three bet him here to $50. Only the button finds a call, so going heads up, out of position to a flop. Flop comes jack, nine, nine, rainbow. And having a pair on this board, I think is pretty valuable, so I decide to go for a $60 bet. The opponent doesn't think for too long before sticking in $60, so we're off to the turn. Turn gives us a boat, it comes the nine of diamonds. And I don't really think there's too much value to get from here. If he was floating us with ace or king high, I think I'll just fold to a bet here on the turn. If he has a jack, he's obviously not going anywhere now because all jacks are chopping. For that reason, I decide to go for the check and he checks behind. When the river comes to five of spades, I have the same logic here. I don't think a bet accomplishes too much. However, when we check, he could think that we're weak here and just giving up on the hand. He could go for a bet, we could call him off and potentially win with our pocket tens. For that reason, I check it over to the opponent. $225 in the middle of the opponent stabs for 55. For the reasons I just listed, I find a call here. Fortunately though for us, the opponent had king and jack offsuit, so his boat is better than our boat. He's gonna take down that $335 pot. We then look down at pocket kings for the second time tonight, this time on the button. 
Fuel limps to me and I raise it up to $30. Small blind min clicks it back now to $60 and the action folds back around to me. Having a strong hand like pocket kings, I think we need to go for the raise here. I'm done folding pocket kings preflop, never again. I make it $165. The opponent's not one to shy away from action. He throws in the additional $105 and we're off to the flop. Flop comes 10, 7, 4, rainbow and the action's on the small blind. He thinks this is a good board for him. He goes all in for $400. We make the easiest snap call of our life here. If he has pocket aces, so be it. Run out comes a seven of hearts and the deuce of spades really shouldn't change too much. And sure enough, the opponent turns over ace 10 of clubs for top pair with an ace kicker. No good, sir. My one pair beats your one pair. And we're going to take down that $1,150 pot here. And we're loving the action here in El Paso at House of Kings. This may be strange to a few of you, but in Texas, we do double board bomb pots whenever the dealer changes or whenever the action just gets too slow and people want to degen it up. That's what happens here. And recently, with my luck, whenever I play these double board either PLO or no limit hold'em bomb pots, I always wake up with premiums. No different here when we have 2750 in our stack and I look down at the ladies. Bomb pot means no action preflop, so we're going to see two boards here. First board comes jack 7 6, so we have an over pair, and the second board comes queen 3 deuce. Bang, we flop a set. With nine players in, there's $90 in the pot. Action checks to me and I bet $50. I think an over pair in a set is going to be good at least on one of the boards. I want to protect my hand on the bottom board against the flush draws even though players really aren't going to fold. Player to my left and the cutoff who we just beat in that pocket kings versus ace 10 hand now min raises me again to $100. Nobody else wants to play in this bomb pot so the action folds back around to me. I think a call is a mistake here giving him good odds to beat us on one of the boards. For that reason I click it back to him for $280. The opponent likes his hand a lot. He sticks in the $280 and we're off to the turn. Top board comes the four of clubs, shouldn't change too much, and the bottom board comes the six of diamonds. There's $650 in the pot and he only has around $600 left in his stack. If I go all in here, it'll put a lot of pressure on his hands. Maybe he'll fold and we're scoop the pot. If not any calls, I think I at least have the pocket queen's hand locked up, unless he has some crazy hand like four or five. For that reason, I rip it all in around $600 effective. He says it might be a short night and he sticks in his chips. Oh man, we're in for a big one here, an $1,800 pot. The first board comes the nine of spades. The second board comes the eight of hearts. I turn over my pocket queens expecting to be good on the bottom board at least. And he turns over pocket threes. What does that leave him on the top board? Just one pair. Ours is better than his. And on the bottom board, it's set over set, baby. We take down this almost $1,900 pot. Amazing luck for us. You got to play the double board bomb pots. It's great action. And occasionally you'll get scooped, but occasionally you'll win a massive one. We're up around $1,700 already, but we're not done yet. We want more chips. We look down at ace king of hearts from the big blind. Under the gun plus one raises it up to $15. We get one caller from late position and now the small blind three bets him to $85. Small blind wasn't getting out of line too much. This $85 raise is pretty large and pretty strong looking. That's what I was going to do. I was going to three bet it up in the neighborhood of $70. I probably should be going for the four bet somewhere in the $250 to $300 range, but I got a little bit of stage fright here and I just put in the call. The downside to putting in the call is that one of the other two opponents is incentivized to put in the call as well. That's what happens when the middle position player puts in the call and we're going three ways to the flop. In between two other opponents, no worries for us though, the board comes ace 7 7 with two diamonds. We should be good here unless the opponent has pocket aces or a 7 in his range. Small blind slows down and checks now. This is indicative of a pocket queens or kings type hand. Actions on me. I don't want to check it over to the middle position player and have him check behind and a diamond comes off on the turn and now it gets messy. For that reason, I decide to bet $100. Not expecting the middle position to call with too many hands, but he surprises us and throws in four green chips, which brings in the small blind as well. All three of us are still in the hand and off to the turn. 
Pot's getting big now, $570 in the pot, and the small blind checks it over to us for a second time. With two opponents in the hand and two flush draws available, I think I need to size up now and make a chunky bet. That's what I do with 570 in the pot, I bet 380. If someone has a worse ace, they're gonna be in a tough spot here, or if they have a diamond or a heart draw, I need to charge them to draw to that type of hand. Middle position player quickly gets out of the way and the small blind comes to the same conclusion and folds as well. Nothing wrong with taking down a $570 pot though. Another one coming our way. That's why. Wow. <laughs> We're running really hot at this table and that's no different here when we look down at pocket aces. Under the gun raises it up to $25 and I three bet him to 75. Antoine and the other players get out of the way, but the under the gun finds a call, so we're heads up in position to the flop, which comes 6-6, six, six, deuce with two spades. Under the gun checks it over to me, and I make a one-third pot size bet here for $55. Under the gun now goes for the check raise, and he makes it $155, so $100 more to us. I can see why he's doing this because if we don't have a pocket pair in our hand, this board does not connect at all with our preflop raising range. Ace king, ace queen, those types of hands are gonna miss here unless we have the spade variety. Little does he know though, we do have the ace of spades in our hand, which is important. Obviously not gonna be re-raising him here and not gonna be folding pocket aces. I stick in the $100 more and we're off to the turn. Turn shouldn't change too much. It comes the nine of clubs and there's $467 in the pot. I'm expecting the opponent to slow down with any non-made hands. If he was just trying to take down the pot on the flop he should just check it over to us here and we can confidently go for a bet that's not what he does though he fires for around 60 percent of the pot 305 dollars hands that we're worried about here are obviously ones that contain a six in it i don't really know what he's doing this with if he has a flush draw we have the ace of spades in our hand but if he has kings or queens he's overvaluing his hand and i think it would be a mistake to fold here on the turn so I stick in the $305 and we're off to the river in an over $1,000 pot. We're looking for a clean river and that's exactly what comes when the deuce of hearts peels off on the river. Thank you, dealer. Even better news for us is when the under the gun position player checks it over to us. If he had a six in his hand, there's no reason why he'd check here. He'd probably just rip it all in because he's chopping against any other sixes, like I'd have one though in this spot. When he checks it over to us, I'm putting him on a value hand, like something between tens and kings, something that we cannot check behind. We need to go for that third street of value here. I decide if he has a hand like kings or queens, he's probably going to pass off for anything between $400 and $700. For that reason, I size up to $675. We get this super cool footage from Antoine across the table. The opponent is obviously very relaxed. The lady's hand is down his shirt. Is this a wraparound? Is this a reach down? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments what the heck is going on with this opponent next to me. Hoping that's a distraction for him here and he's going to find the wrong call. And sure enough, bang, he throws in a chip. One chip indicates a call to the dealer. I turn over my aces and the opponent sheepishly turns in his cards. That means we win the pot $2,400. The largest pot I've won on this road trip by far. Drop a like and a subscribe right now if you aren't already. The action is only going to get crazier from here, especially now that we're up almost 4k on the trip. Last hand of the night, and it wouldn't be right unless we picked up pocket aces another time tonight. What is our luck? The player on my right, who I just beat in that large pot, raises it up to $20. I'm putting the pressure on him again. I three bet it to $60. Our homie Antoine and the player to our right both put in the call, so we're going three ways to the flop. 180 in the pot, and the flop comes pretty safe. 10 7 4 with two hearts. Player to my right starts with a check, and I'm not going to be checking it over to Antoine here. I fire for $75. Some friendly fire coming our way when Antoine min raises us to $150. Middle position gets out of the way and the action's on us. Obviously not folding for $75 more. I stack another tower of red chips next to the original one and we're off to the turn. Turn pairs to 10, it comes a 10 of spades. Not a great card because if for some reason he was min raising us with a 10, he now makes the best hand with trips. However, the front door flush draw and the obvious 8-9 straight draw does not get there. So there's not really too much to be worried about other than the 10. When I check, I look over at Antoine and he looks pretty confident and sticks out $200. Not in a great spot here because when he raises us on the flop and bets the turn, it's unlikely he's doing that with the miss straight or flush draws. It's probably just a 10 here. For that reason, and because I like Antoine, he came all the way out to play with us. I'd show my pocket aces face up and muck them. 
He's a nice guy. He shows us that he turned trips 10 deuce of diamonds. Oh man, we would have won a nice sized pot there if an undercard came on the turn. Oh well, happy the chips are going to a great guy. Thanks for coming out, Antoine and everybody else at the table. What a session this was. All right, you guys, that wraps up the craziest session on this vlog and in my poker career. We got out of that 2-5 game for, let's check the sheet, 45-45, $4,500. So a net profit of 26-10 on that one. And if you add in the 435 we won at the 1-2 tables, that brings us up to $3,045 of profit on this exact session. Here's how we're doing in the overall road trip. If you guys really enjoyed this video like I did making it, drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment down below. Let me know where your guys' favorite card room is to play at and maybe I'll hit it up soon on this road trip. If not, good luck on the felt. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.